We've all done that. And print, the reason we've done it, for the most part, is not related to price or product quality. We leave because of stupid things that have happened or some ridiculous comment that one of the staff made to us or I, I wrote something the other day. I, I do a blog every few weeks on a website called customerthink.com which used to be crmguru.com but now it's customerthink. But I wrote something the other day about a, a lady who told me a story. She went into a women's wear store to buy a dress to go to a wedding and she, she sh went around the racks for 30 minutes or so and found a black dress that she liked, took it up to the front to the counter to the clerk there and said, uh, could you find me this in a size 10? At which point the clerk said, oh, no, my dear, you're definitely going to need a 12. <laughs> so guess where she bought the dress? Or guess where she didn't buy the dress? So much of what drives customer relationships, both positive and negative, this is a lesson I learned early on, but still surprises some people, have absolutely nothing to do with the product we're selling or the price we're charging. Whereas most marketers are very focused on product and very focused. Now, you guys have to have good products, right? It's a given. If you don't have leading edge, tech, you know, technology driven research and development, cl clinical trials, all this sort of stuff, if you don't get all that right and have a quality product, you might as well pack your bags and, and leave. So in this industry, product quality has to be a given. Am I right? So the rest of it, the softer stuff is what drives the customer relationship. So that's really what I want to focus on today. But the reason I ask you those questions is to get you thinking about some of this sort of stuff. So CRM is a phrase that you've heard a lot of over the last few months. Am I right, Kara? Yeah. Hopefully. And uh, I want to put into context where I fit into CRM because CRM, in my view, is part of a bigger picture. CRM as it's typically defined in organizations in terms of CRM systems and CRM processes and so on and the Horizon product that you've implemented here is part of a bigger picture. And it's the technology side, it's the information side, it's the database side and so on. But I want us to think this morning a lot more about the customer and how we build relationships with that customer. And that's going to require that we think about relationships in a different way and think about marketing in a different way. So I want, I want us to think a lot more deeply about the customer and a lot more uh, focused on what it means to have a meaningful relationship. And the word meaningful here is important. And isn't that what we all want? You know, if I'd, if I'd met you on, in Grafton Street with a clipboard and said, tell me about your relationships, you wouldn't have mentioned your hairdresser. You wouldn't have mentioned Cadbury's. You wouldn't have mentioned Marks and Spencer. Who would you have mentioned? <laughs> Family, partners, kids, siblings, right? The people with whom you work, maybe. The, the people you play rugby or, 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 or uh, football with or whatever. But you wouldn't have mentioned commercial enter entities. So we tend to reserve the word relationships for special connections that we have. And how do we make those meaningful? So how do you make your relationships with doctors in this country a more meaningful relationship? It's a very interesting question. Because the last thing we want are superficial relationships. The last thing we want are fly-by-night relationships. What we want are relationships that are going to be enduring, ongoing, mutually satisfying, mutually rewarding. Am I right? I mean, that's what we tend to mean by the word relationship. Most organizations, when asked to define their best customers, defer to their database and pull off the numbers. Okay? You okay with that? That's what happens. So don't feel, you know, that you're doing anything wrong. That's exactly what happens. Um, I was doing some work, oh, goodness, ten, 10 years ago in Sweden with IKEA. You know IKEA? Yeah. Great company. Fascinating company, by the way. Um, really understands customers. And... Um, I was dealing with all of their marketing managers for Europe. I had about the same number of people there as I have here this morning, as we have this morning. And um, I said to them, who are your best customers? And they sort of smiled collectively. And one of the guys sitting in the front said, that's easy, at IKEA. And they all knew what he was going to say. We define our best customers as those who like us the most. 
Now I said, whoa, that, that's brave. That's, that's bold. That's really gutsy to take that step. And what they meant, of course, is if customers like you enough, everything else will follow. They will come more often. They will spend more money. They will tell their friends about it, etc., etc. But what was really interesting was the, the notion of liking. And we shouldn't dismiss that. And, and, and on the surface, that seems really simple. All you need to do is make sure those doctors like you. Now the hard part begins. How? Right. But that was, that's IKEA's view of the world and always has been. That if customers like you enough, they'll come back and buy from you again and again. And they understand, you know, liking is all about creating play areas for the kids and, and good restaurants where you can get a you know, very good value for money for a meal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, that's a, we could talk, I could talk at length about IKEA. The danger of defining customers as those who buy from us most often or prescribe the most, et cetera, is what I call a database view of the world. Because at the end of the day, customers are not data points. To look at a customer as a data point is a, is a demeaning, uh, impersonal view of the customer. They're not data points, they're people. They're people with lives, they're people with challenges, they're people with goals and needs and objectives and all the other things that you and I have as people. So how do we approach our customers as people as opposed to data points? Because every one of them is different. And that's why one of the most powerful concepts in customer relationship management is customization and personalization. Nobody likes to feel like a number. Right? Nobody likes to feel like they don't matter. And I know you're dealing with small numbers of customers and it's a lot easier, in fact, in your case, to treat people as people because you do meet them face to face, although it may be difficult sometimes to get in front of them, but you do, in fact, meet them face to face when a lot of other organizations don't. 